In this video, I'm going to tell you why I think the Kansas City Royals can make the playoffs in 2024. Now I know what you're thinking. You're looking at me and you're saying, Noob, there's absolutely no way they can make the playoffs in 2024. After all, the Kansas City Royals went 56-106 and finished 31 games behind in the AL Central last year. The only team that finished worse than that was the Oakland Athletics, and we all know how historically bad they were. Sorry, Ace fans. Things look really grim for the Royals. Not only were they one of the worst teams in baseball last year, but their farm system is a barren wasteland coming in at number 27 on the fan graphs ranking system but despite all of this there are some things that could suggest that they could do well for themselves in 2024 so here are five reasons why the kansas city royals can make the playoffs in 2024 number five bounce back and breakout years brady singer had an excellent year in 2022 pitching to the tune of a 3-2-3 era in 153 innings and it looked like the royals had themselves their future ace singer was expected to replicate and build off of these numbers but singer had a horrible year in 2023 with an ERA around five and a half across just 160 innings. Although his ERA was high, his FIP was down lower to a tune of 4.29, which could suggest he ran into a lot of bad luck, maybe some poor fielding performances behind him. If he performs closer to his 2022 self, he could be a huge weapon for the Royals this year and beyond. And speaking of huge weapons for the Royals, Salvador Perez has been the biggest weapon offensively the Royals have had in the past decade. He has racked up a lot of mileage over his career, however, and it may have begun to show with a degree increasing OPS every year since 2020, in which that OPS plummeted to a 714 this year. If he can even get back to a 750, 775 level, which I believe he could if he DH more, maybe throw MJ Melendez, Freddie Furman behind the plate more defensively, that could really help him keep fresh and we could be seeing a little bit of a bounce back year from Salvador Perez. Now, I don't think he can replicate his 2021 where he had 48 home runs, but if he hit 30 home runs with an OPS of 750, maybe he gets on base a little bit more. I think that's a very solid bounce back and that can absolutely help with the Royals getting back to a competitive spot in the AL Central. The Royals also have potentially two stars in the making in Cole Reagans and Vinny Pasquantino. Cole Reagans came over from the Texas Rangers in the Aroldis Chapman trade and had a blistering couple of months. Reagans was using the bullpen in Texas, but when he came over to KC, he converted to a starter. And through 12 starts, he put up a 2.63 ERA with a 2.49 whip. He has a lot of talent, and boy, does that baseball savant page have a ton of red under his name. It is actually beautiful if he could just replicate that or build off of it the Kansas City Royals have another guy in that rotation that could do very well for them also Vinny Pasquantino was supposed to be a huge part of the offense in 2023 but played less than half of the season due to injury and when he was on the field he wasn't as good as his 2022 self in 2022 he slashed 295 383 and 450 for an OPS of 883 or 833 excuse me if he could produce closer to that level in 2024 he'll be a very important piece of that lineup going forward these next couple guys don't necessarily need to break out, but they just need to take a small step forward. These supporting cast members in Michael Garcia and Nelson Velasquez can also play huge parts in getting KC back to the winning ways. Michael Garcia didn't have a very aesthetically pleasing stat line from 2023, but the underlying metrics really support forward progress. He has the ball very hard. He is also a fantastic glove, being in the 98th percentile and outs above average over there at third base. Nelson Velasquez also could have a breakout year for Kansas City. He did not play a full season last year but they did acquire him in a trade with the cubs in 162 abs with the club he had 17 bombs even though it was a very very small sample size the baseball savant page it still has a lot of red on it and because it is a small sample size the ability to replicate those numbers is very unlikely but if he can build upon those 162 at bats and put it together for a full season kansas city will be very happy and so will the fans in kansas city it's hard to ask for more than 17 bombs out of 162 abs that is a lot a lot of power i'm definitely Definitely not saying all these breakouts and bounce backs are imminent by any means. They're not slam dunks. I'm just saying it is possible and there is reason to be optimistic in Kansas City. This brings me to my number four point. Up to this point in the offseason, Kansas City has been one of the more active teams on the free agent market. A sentence I didn't think I'd say until about maybe 2027. At the time of the recording, they have signed starting pitcher Seth Lugo to a three year deal worth 45 mil and Michael Walker to a two year deal worth 32 mil. Both had really decent years. Seth Lugo throwing to a 357 ERA over 146 innings, and Waka had a solid year too, 322 ERA over 134 innings. They're not necessarily the top end guys with the best stuff, but they have put up respectable numbers the last two years. Last year was the first year Lugo was even in his starting rotation, so there's reason to believe that the innings pitch could go up this year if he stays healthy. And pitching isn't the only thing that the Royals have addressed so far in this offseason. They also signed Hunter Renfro to a two year deal. Now, I know Renfro had a disappointing season last year, but he is not far removed from being a 
a very competent power hitter that could settle in the middle of any lineup. If he can tap into the power that he showed us in 21 and 22, especially when he was with the Red Sox, he will absolutely be valued in this lineup. Moving on to number three. Overall, the division may be the weakest in baseball. There's not a team in the AL Central that looks to just run away with it. It is definitely up for grabs for anyone at this point. The only team in the division last year that had a winning record was the Minnesota Twins. They've also had key pieces from the rotation the past year, leaving this offseason in Sonny Gray and Kenta Maeda. Now, I know there's still plenty of time for them to add before the start of 2024, but as of now, they do not look like a better team than last year, and it's not like they were a 100-win team. They went 87-75. and 75. The Chicago White Sox have also been a major disappointment to even me personally. I thought after the 2021 season that they were going to be running away with the division for many years with that young core of Makata, Eloy, Cease, Kopech, Tim Anderson, but it just hasn't worked out, whatever the reason is, and they're even looking like they're going to rebuild fully. Tons of rumors going around about them trading Dylan Cease. Please send it to my Braves. I do think Detroit has a lot of upside and are on the right track with Spencer Torkelson starting to live up to his potential and guys like Kerry Carpenter, Tarek Skubal, and Riley Green starting to emerge as key contributors in that lineup. Also being a bit active this season on the free agent market, getting guys like Maeda and Mark Hanna. They also got Jack Flaherty on a one-year deal. There's a lot of upside there if he can turn things around. Plus, if they get Javi Baez to stop swinging at pitches that end up in the first base dugout, they might have a pretty dangerous middle of the lineup brewing out there. The Guardians always seem to be in the mix and are very reliable when it comes to pumping out starting pitching. We all know that they are going to pitch, but are they going to add any offense? In that case, are they going to add anything at all, really? They were right in the middle of a division race last year and decided to sell when they could have gone and been buyers at the deadline. I believe they were, what, two games back in the division lead when it came to the deadline? I'm just not convinced that they even want to spend money on making the team better around their superstar third baseman and octagon champion, Jose Ramirez. Also, the word superstar brings me to point number two, rising superstar Bobby Wood Jr. By the time 2024 is over, Bobby Wood Jr. may not just be one of the biggest superstars in the AL Central, but across the whole major leagues. He had an insane sophomore season, almost going 30-50, missing out on the seals by just one. He also finished in the seventh in AL MVP voting. I'm just going to read a stat line off real quick. Last year, Bobby Wood Jr. hit 276 with 30 home runs, 96 RBI, 97 runs scored, 49 stolen bases, slash line to the tune of 276, 319, and 495 with an OPS plus of 120. Finished with a B-War of 4.4. He also has a lot of red on that baseball savant page. He's also in the 98th percentile in range of outs above average. He has a very strong arm, and he's in the 100th percentile in sprint speed. He's one of the fastest guys in the majors. The one flaw with his game right now, in my opinion, is his way to get on base. He hit 276, but his OBP is only 319. If he can just work a couple more walks in his game, if he can get on base a little bit more, he only had 40 walks last year, which is more than he had the year before, but he also had 50 more at-bats. But he struck out 14 less times in about 60 more plate appearances. That's a very, very good sign. If he can keep working on those things and improving year after year after year, sky's the limit for Bobby Wood Jr. He does not get enough recognition, in my opinion. And he's going to be good for a very, very long time. All of these are huge reasons why the Royals can make the playoffs. But I have yet to cover the most important factor yet. They have something that not only gives them a solid chance to make the playoffs, but something that guarantees a World Series victory. I have one name for you. Will Smith. They signed Will Smith, who has been on the World Series champions the last three seasons. 21 with the Braves, 22 with the Astros, and last year with the Texas Rangers. So it is bound to happen again. It is inevitable. It's just science. So these are the reasons that it is possible for the Royals to make the playoffs. I don't necessarily think it will happen because a lot of these need to go in the right direction. But if we've learned anything in the past couple of seasons is that baseball is a weird sport and anything can happen. So I am super excited to see how this all plays out. So if you enjoyed the content, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like the content. This is the first video I've ever done like this, possibly the first of many. And also in your most civil fashion, leave a comment down below why you think I'm wrong and what you think I'm right about. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.